Hi. It's usually a patient who coming in in, in it's called antalgic uh, position. Antalgic position is a tr patient who try to get into the position to kind of compensate from the pain, uh, to alleviate the pain. So in this case, the patient coming in, they're holding in the probably in the painful area. They'll try to not put too much of the weight. Okay. Sometimes that patient might go like a little bit more on the curve onto that side to alleviate the pain or they might go on the opposite side to try to stretch from the pain. So it could be in a many different like pain posi like a position, different changing position. It's all individual. It's all the pain is the cause is could be a biomechanics of the spine itself, disc itself, tension in the muscle, the alignment, the gait, the body type, it's all different. So make sure to kind of try to individualize the patient and finding out what is the cause. So next test that we're going to do, let's pull the table off just a bit, and I have a set facing towards me. Um, next test is that from somebody who's having a pain, you will do the Bextrus test. Bextrus test is that you felt that the probably pain on the right side, and then what you're going to do is that, well, let's try from the not painful side. So let's bring this one up and then see, does it have radiating pain? If there's a probably no, that's good. And then, affected side, you bring this up, is there any pain? And then if the patient say, yeah, I feel the pain going to like maybe L4 dermatone, then you suspect that it's probably your herniated disc. So this is just simple. I usually call seated, like straight leg raise test, just kind of bringing it up and see. If, if there is the um, possibility of the hernia disc, then at this point, just make sure to do, do the uh, reflex. And sometimes in the reflex, what I usually do is I place my hand on the thigh and then hit the, um, the patellar ligament right here. If you can feel the contraction right here, that's enough. It doesn't have to be contracted like it's seeing, actually seeing the leg motion. So do that and then also for the Achilles, boom, boom, and then I often do the Babensky at the same time. So then you take, you kind of check for making sure that there's no upper motor new, neuron lesion um, the patient is suffering from. So that's the best truth. And then slump test is also, you can do it in a seated. You can bring this leg up. Uh, extend the knee, also dorsiflex, and then ask the patient to bend forward and then tuck the their chin. And this is will be, it's called slump test. And you're basically really increasing the interfecal pressure and also stretching all these uh, nerve and sciatic and all that. So ask the patient, where is the pain? If it's on the back, it could be a back, like muscle strain sprain. It could be a radicular pain. It could be a herniated disc. Uh, next test is uh, Kemp's test. Let's have you face, uh, turn around. Kemp, Kemp's test is one of the tests that what you want to do is if you suspect the facet, um, like an uh, irritation. So, if the facet is irritated, what you want to do is that you want to extend, also laterally flex, and rotate it, and you see this is really jammed. And then when you extend a little bit, you can kind of push this and actually jam this facet joint. If you do that, and then it will increase the pain. Then a lot of time with facet irritation and inflammation, facet capsulitis, a lot of times if you do manipulation, boom, move it, increase the joint space, a lot of times increasing the circulation and it will really help the patient to heal. So the way you want to do it, I usually bring my hand down, I usually put my form across the patient's shoulder and then put my thumb to the where you're going to actually test it for so you can find the ear crest form 5 and then you can you can laterally flex rotate it towards and then extend and then push a little bit and then see each segment of the lumbar region and then to the opposite side same same thing I'm going to come laterally flex rotate it towards and then do the extension right here and if there is a pain then probably the uh, facet problem it could be an opposite side pain because it's a stretching so then it could be a more mus uh, muscle sprain uh, sprain strain issues right there okay 
Next test is, let's see, uh, turnings. Uh, let's have the patient lay on the back. Sorry, okay, let's get them out of it. Um, turning is for this, you suspect Somebody's having a like radiating pain. It's possible that having a hernia disc. Then turning is the simply just bringing the big toe up to kind of stretch. If the person is already having pain with this, then you can do the straight leg raise to kind of confirm what's going on. But be uh, cautious. If somebody's just going this and boom, radiating pain, then that could be probably a little bit severe. If the right side is the painful side, then I would probably start it with well leg raise side. So this side, well leg, the unaffected side, you can bring it up and ask the patient if there's any radiating pain patterns on this side. If it's not, then you want to start the straight leg raise test, 0 to 35, usually extra spinal, so it could be a piriformis also, the tension. 35 to 70 usually indicates more on the hernia disc area and then 70 to 90 that goes more on the lumbar region issues um, but making sure most important thing is that to kind of finding the radiating pain pattern and dermatological pain pattern it could be in the, below like 35 degree and having a dermatological uh, pain pattern that will indicate the hernia disc after doing a straight leg raise test what you can also do is, let's see, uh, uh, let's see, what would be a good sequence to do? Uh, straight leg and then Lasig test. Lasig test is you want to do the straight leg raise test. If there's a pain, and then you will do is that you will flex the knee. If the pain um, is alleviated, the uh, pain goes down, you're confirming uh, the straight leg raise test. So straight leg raise test, boom, there's a dermatological pain pattern in L4, there's a pain, you will flex the knee and the pain goes away. That means that probably there's a hernia disc that's causing um, radiating pain um, for the patient. The similar test is Koenig test. Koenig test is starting with knee and hip flexion. So you will bring this up, flexion. And then you can actually straight the knee. When you do this, increasing the interfecal uh, pressure, Koenig's test is for the meningitis. So if you flex the knee and, knee and the hip, try to extend the knee, boom, there's a pain, then that's a possibility is the patient's um, suffering from meningitis. You can also do the Brzezinski test. If you do anything, you want to do the blood test, you want to send it to the ER, they will maybe do the spinal tap, and they will do the, all the follow-up. So making sure, the LASAG uh, test and also Koenig is similar. LASAG is more for the straight leg raise test, knee flexion. Koenig is knee and hip flexion, and then straight. Okay. Um, next test we can do is uh, Braga's test. So Breda's test is what you want to do is that you want to bring the straight leg raise. If there's a pain, radiating pain, bring it about five degree down, and then decrease the pain level, and then dorsiflexion. And when you dorsiflexion, you should increase the pain because you're stretching the sciatic nerve. Okay, then that's a positive. But next test is bringing it up straight leg. There's a pain. Then what you want to do is bring it five degree down, and then bring it pain down, and then internally rotate and then eighty degree duct, stretch the piriformis, and then that will pinch the sciatic nerve, and it's going to be positive. To confirm that, what you can do: straight leg raise test. Don't bring it down. Keep the pain level. Externally rotate it and abduction. When you do that, then if the pain goes down, then that means the piriformis is the problem. Um, Milgram's test, what you want to do is that you want to ask the patient to bring the both legs up about a six inches or so and then hold it there. Okay, hold. When you ask the patient to hold, you're contracting the abdominal muscle. When you contract the abdominal muscles and also the iliopsoas, increasing the interthecal pressure. If there's a hernia disc, increasing the interthecal pressure, you will cause radiating pain patterns. So the patient should be able to do this without having any of the radiating pain patterns 
but if it's a positive, the pain patterns, and for the hernia disc. Now you can bring it down. Um, next test, next two tests, is for the malingering. Malingering is the when the patient is faking the pain. What you can do is ask the patient to scoot up a little bit. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And what you're going to do is that this will be affected side. You're going to add, place your hand on the heel on the opposite side. Ask the patient to raise this leg up. And if there's somebody have a pain, you will feel the pressure going down because it's compensating and they'll try to torque their hip and they'll push this down. If somebody is just, they are able to raise leg without feeling, go ahead and raise leg, and I'm not feeling that any pressure is going down, that could be a positive, okay? Or they will say, oh, I can't raise the leg, that could be another positive, without even trying it, okay? Uh, Burns bench test is actually having a patient sit up and then uh, actually put your knees up here and then this is that uh, making sure that you really suspect the patient is not telling you the truth. You actually go ahead and sit up, sit up a little bit, up, up a little, bring your hip up, uh, yeah. and then I'm going to actually hold it on the leg and ask the patient to go slowly try to touch the floor. Okay. Make sure that it's secure so the patient feel good. They should be able to do this because at this point they're not really contracting any of the lower back muscles and it should be stretching in and it should be feel good. But when they try to come up, try to come up, they should feel the pain and that's when they feel the pain that's the truth. They're having some like lower back issues. But usually people are faking it, they're not going to even try to go down because they feel that they shouldn't be able to do that. So that's the uh, malingual test. The last test is that ask, ask the patient to lay on the stomach. Uh, Full hyperextension test, just checking for the muscle, like sprain strain, ask the patient to raise the body up. Yep. If they can't even do this because of the pain, then you definitely suspect the muscle uh, sprain strain right here. The, those will be an issue right here. Good. And I think that's it for the lumbar